What's going on? My name is Joey and today we're talking about how to make a Spider-Man fan film with zero budget. And don't forget, my videos stay on during... Spider-Man Lost Cause is a fan film we started in 2012 and finished two years later at the end of 2014. And somehow it's racked up 60 million views. Spider-Man Lost Cause stars myself as Peter Parker, who is trying to figure out who he is in this new world. He is struggling to come to terms with the death of Uncle Ben, new superpowers and the threat of Oscorp. Today I want to talk to the creators, the creators that want to create fan films but don't feel like they can. The creators that don't feel like they've got the best equipment, don't feel like they've got the best budget, don't feel like they've got the best people or even don't feel like you're good enough to make it. We live in an age now where creators we follow now have access to these amazing cameras, these talented people and heaps of money through Indiegogo and Kickstarter. And personally, I get a little worried that ultimately this will demotivate certain creators into thinking that they're not good enough to create this film because they don't have these things. And by the end of it, if I've just inspired one of you guys to go out and make your fan film with limited resources and not worrying about what everyone else is doing, I've done my job. So let's dive into part one. This is all about the inspiration that led up to Lost Cause and of course the pre-production, which is everything before you start shooting. So what inspired Lost Cause? The main inspiration for starting Lost Cause was, I guess, comedy sketches. Me and my friend Andrew Miles wanted to make comedy sketches set in a Marvel universe. We wanted to make comedy sketches of Captain America, Spider-Man the Hulk, and I was in charge of script writing. Probably the worst job in the world for me because I just got so excited writing a Spider-Man uh, comedy sketch that I just made it into a feature film. I started off with little funny scenes, then wrote what happened before that, what happened after that, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to write how he got bit by the spider. I'm going to write how Uncle Ben died. And then I want to make a new fun villain. And then Lost Cause was born. Why Spider-Man? Spider-Man to me has been one of the most relatable characters I could ever wish for in my day-to-day -day life. Um, when I was a kid, I remember dressing up as Spider-Man. There was this really funny story that I don't think I've ever told anyone before where there was a bully down my road. And I remember him shouting and screaming at me every day. And my mum got me a Spider-Man costume for my birthday. And I remember walking outside in this Spider-Man costume, being 10 years old, and just looking at him like, I'm going to beat you up. He kept shouting and screaming at me, but like, I think the, the, the power I felt in this Spider-Man costume was thinking like, I am so powerful, and not one word you're going to say to me is going to hurt me today. And that moulds you as a person. I, I truly think Spider-Man is one of the greatest characters ever written. What was the goal with Spider-Man Lost Cause? The goal really was just to make a film and it was to make a Spider-Man film. During uni, I had a lot of uh, moments where I really didn't like it, and it was because every single person on our uni was making films about drugs or suicide or depression or knife crime. It's usually the four things everyone makes at university. I hated that. I need an outlet where I can make something fantastical and cool, something that I love. I also really wanted to push my abilities. I felt like I was learning a lot from university, but there was a lot I wasn't. And I just felt like if I just go out and do something, make a film myself, I can just learn on the job. So that was it. It was really just to make something, make something cool, make something fun, uh, be Spider-Man. There's nothing cooler than being Spider-Man. And I guess it was just to have a hobby outside of university. So this section would be the pre-production section. The pre-production means it's basically everything before we start shooting the film. So the main subjects of this video, number one, budget. Now I'm not gonna stand here and lie to you and say, you don't need a budget. Uh, if, you, if you go into this with no budget, it's going to be amazing. It's gonna be like the best experience ever. Um, it's gonna be no harder than having a budget. It would be a lie. Having no budget going into these kind of films is one of the most challenging things you'll ever do. I mean, like, wouldn't it be nice to have 20, 50 or 100 grand to spend on a fan film, to spend on your passion? But let's be honest, not a lot of us are going to get that. With Spider-Man Lost Cause, I only spent maximum £400, which is about $500. I wasn't working. The only jobs I had were little random wedding jobs. I was paying off a student loan. I had no money. I had absolutely no money. So spending no money on a film was the only thing I could do. It sounds awful, but I didn't pay anyone. Everyone who was on this shoot was doing it for the love of the character, love of the film, or just wanted to be a part of something, which is amazing. And they're all lifelong friends to this day. 
Now, uh, if you have the opportunity to get budget, if you know people, if you can go on Indiegogo, if you can go on Kickstarter, go for it. But like I said at the beginning, sometimes it's hard for people to do that, whether it be anxiety, whether it be just something they just don't want to do, or maybe they're just scared of failure, or maybe you've done it and tried and unfortunately didn't get the budget. Basically, I'm just here to say, I've done it with no budget, you can too. Honestly, if I've done it, anyone can do it, I promise you that. Number two, the script. I, I am not gonna sugarcoat anything in this video today. I'm gonna to tell you as honest as I can um, how unprepared we were with the script. The script was barely finished when we started. I just got so excited. I told my friend, we need to shoot this today and let's just go do it. Why not? Let's just go do it. And we'll figure out the story later. There was about probably about 100 pages that we got done. I had no idea what the ending was for like a whole year. The villain got changed during editing. <laughs> Everything I'm telling you, please don't do because it's just going to add so much more stress to your life. And it's just going to make a mess of a film overall, which Lost Cause kind of is. But that's what happened, right? It's just it's just how we were. We didn't we, we didn't learn any of this. We had no idea. This is what Lost Cause is all about. It was all about is learning the process, learning how we do it and, and being better uh, at the end of it. But yeah, I think the, the script ended up being 150 pages long, which is insanely long. It is a two and a half hour film. God, that is long, that's a long script. But I guess that's the thing about Lost Cause, right? It's, you can tell it's handmade, you can tell it's kind of made by people that don't really know what they're doing, they're learning, but they're having fun, the passion's there. But yeah, I remember the writing process. The writing process was so fun because I just remember being locked in my room for five days straight, just cracking out this wicked film, watching Spider-Man films, watching Tasm, and I'm just like, yes, I need this. Going through all the TV shows, like the animated Spider-Man series, going, yes, we need these moments in, and oh, I literally locked myself away for like five days to write it. Number three, storyboards. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, there wasn't any. There was literally no storyboards. I think the only thing I ever drew storyboard wise was how I wanted Barney, the main the main bad guy to look. And I just remember drawing a massive trench coat and just spikes coming out of him everywhere. I, I, I'm very sure I've got the drawing somewhere. I didn't do any storyboards, nothing. Like I said, this film was very run and gun. Number four, the crew. So like I said before, we had no budget, so I couldn't hire anyone from Hollywood. So I went into my uni lecture and was like, hey guys, um, I want to make a Spider-Man film. Does anyone want to join? I can't pay you. It's going to be a lot of work and a lot of time, but it could be fun. Like, why not? I'm very lucky that quite a few friends of mine joined in. Um, the, the, the most notable crew members was obviously myself. who did absolutely everything, sound, directing, acting, blah, 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 literally everything. Uh, my friend Andrew, who then became the camera guy, who helped with the sound, who helped with uh, getting my costume on and off. Uh, Craig, who was the main, uh, my main best friend in the film, he also did everything, he, he was running for us, making sure the script was fine. Travis, who ended up doing all the lighting and stuff and all the sound. We were a great team, there was like four or five of us, barely that, sometimes there was just two of us. Uh, like I said, these guys weren't getting paid, we were just there like, okay guys, if we've got some free time, shall we just quickly knock a scene out? Uh, while we was at uni, um, after uni, we'd be like, right boys, um, I want to film a Spider-Man scene today if you guys are down. Um, it will take like three hours if you can guys stay behind class and we'll just knock a scene out. That's what we did every single time, every single week. We were just like, right, uh, we've still got these scenes today. We can knock this out today if you want to. Um, and if they're like, oh, I can't today, mate, well, let's do it tomorrow. And that's all we did. That, there was no call sheets. There was no time really dedicated to us like really thinking about it. We just got the script, got the page. I was like, all right, we can do that today. Let's go do it. Number five, the music and composition. So, um, so this is, this is I, don't, I don't actually know how other people do it, but this is how I've, I still do it to this day. I get inspired by a piece of music. For Lost Cause, it was Time by Hans Zimmer. And I just go on YouTube, I'm just like, right, uh, I need to find someone who has remade this track, who has the exact same knowledge, exact same composition as Hans Zimmer. And if he's done that, that means he's clearly talented. <laughs> and that's how I actually found uh, Jaschko Hudiki, um, who is a German composer who is off doing amazing things now. He is insanely talented. That's how I found him. And I, again, just like my friends with the crew, I just said, hey, buddy, um, I don't have any money. I want to make a Spider-Man film. Do you want to join? And Yashka 
was amazing because I didn't know the guy. We weren't friends. We, I was just a stranger asking him to be a part of this feature two hour long Spider-Man film. And he just says yes and produces some of the greatest music ever. I, his talent is absolutely like bar none. He is so talented. Even to this day, he is producing the most incredible music. Even after Lost Cause, I ended up having him on Paper Planes. Uh, which was a short film I did after uh, Spider-Man because he's just so good and I still want to use him to this day but I've told myself I'm only using him until I pay him. I, I have to pay him before I use him again because he's so, he's so talented. He's so talented. It's exactly the same with the main track of the film. I just said, hey buddy, can I put this in the film because it's kind of perfect and he just said yes. I do feel like there is a lot more stigma nowadays to people helping out on fan films. I feel like a lot more people um, are a bit more reluctant to help mainly because there's so much going on nowadays or mainly because you know recessions and such money is insanely important but there's a lot less people now just helping out and I found that out the hard way on another world when I was just asking so many people if they could help out because I was struggling so much with VFX and no one would do it everyone was like they were too busy I need money and I was like I get it I get it but I just want to finish my film <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have money. Back then it was a lot, it was, people were a lot more inclined to help out. Um, whereas nowadays I just see loads of people, you know, asking for money and, and, and yeah, I mean like, I get it, I get it. I don't know why I'm, it's not even a complaint. It's just, I get it, people need money. Number six, the casting. Uh, so the casting, the casting was nil. Again, no money. So I can't go to these actors and go, hey, um, I know you're amazing at what you do and I know you're amazing at your craft, but um, I'm going to need you for a long period of time. So at that point, I just used my friends and family, which you can tell, obviously, like with again, with these setbacks where you don't have budget, you have to limit yourself on what you can produce. Right. So if you're if you don't have money, you can't afford these amazing actors. So you have to use your friends and family and they're not they're not trained actors, right? They, they don't know what they have to do. They've not been trained to talk on camera. They've not been trained to, you know, give expressions. They, 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 they just know their day-to-day -day life and just know what I'm telling them on camera. So yes, asking your friends and family is amazing because they might help out. Um, they might even help you out for free and such, but they're not actors at the end of the day, right? And everyone's, everyone can tell it's a tough one, right? So at that point, I was just like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask my friends and family if they can step in as actors. My 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 grandfather, God rest his soul, played Uncle Ben. My grandmother played uh, Aunt May. Uh, my best friend in the film, Nick, was my best friend in real life. The bad guy was Travis. And Harry Osborne was also my best friend. Again, it was just all friends and family. Uh, Gwen Stacy was my girlfriend at the time. I didn't want to cast myself as Peter Parker and I was asking those people if they wanted to be Peter Parker. Um, those people either couldn't dedicate the time, had stuff to do, or at the point where we was going to shoot, it didn't turn up, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> um, so I ended up stepping in as Peter Parker and that was kind of a godsend because I'm always available and I love Spider-Man so I'll be Peter Parker, that's fine. I only got two people in Lost Cause who I didn't know beforehand who were actual actors. I was at a university where they studied acting and film production. So we could just go into the actors and go, hey guys, do you want to come in on our films? Norman Osborn was an actor who I didn't know. And um, he was the only person that got paid. <laughs> I, I felt so guilty that he came in and just, just did the most amazing performance. And he helps little old me do these amazing scenes that made the film so good. I gave him 20 quid on the day. I was like, mate, thank you so much. Here's 20 quid and I guess I got in petrol. Seven, the Spider-Man costume was a costume I found on eBay. It was a the amazing Spider-Man costume as a small adult. I remember buying it for 20 pound and buying 20 pound worth of puff paint, spending 48 hours puff painting the suit. This mask was awful. Uh, when I bought it, there was basically, these, these lenses weren't here. Uh, it was just white mesh going in from these, these eye holes here. And I hated it. I thought it was like the worst thing ever. I felt kind of shitty about it because at that point it was a lot of money and I was like, well, how am I going to make this mask better? And I remember seeing some Spider-Man themed sunglasses that had these lenses on it on eBay for a fiver. I bought them, snapped the glasses off, cut them out, 
and super glued them on to this mask. <laughs> and I remember being so proud because I said to myself, this is just so cool. This is just such a cool mask. The lenses look amazing. I could see through it. It looks like an actual Spider-Man mask. I did the same with a the belt. There was a Batman belt I found on eBay for a fiver and I painted it red and uh, I was like, okay, this is going to be Spider-Man's utility belt and it just looks so cool on the film. And I, I love the costume so much because the pattern was distinctive, right? It wasn't, it wasn't the same as Andrew Garfield's film, but it was, you know, pretty similar. The logo was a little bit different. The pattern was a little bit different. The colors were a little bit different. And that's why I added the belt and, you know, little little other things to the costume to make it stand out a little bit more. And I remembered that um, it was a little bit more baggy than it should have been. It should be like super tight, but I love that it was baggy because it just looks so different. And yeah, these little things like I've adding to make it my suit. And I truly loved it. I really loved that suit. And even like the shoes, I remember telling myself like, I just want, to, I just want my Spider-Man to run around in just high tops. Nike high tops, that's all I want. It'll look so cool. It looks kind of cheap on film, but like, again, it gives that nice like homey feel, right? Last but not least for pre-production is marketing. In university, we never learned marketing. Now I'm older, I've realized how insanely important marketing is. Marketing your business, marketing your films, marketing yourself is literally one of the most important things ever, especially in this generation. But I am so lucky that I grew up on the fact that I, you, I did YouTube and I watched people like Mr. Beast and Tobuscus and the mystery guitar man. They sound so like old school now, it's kind of crazy. Except Mr. Beast, obviously. Um, and they used to market themselves a lot, right? And I just remember talking to things to myself, I need to do this for my films. Um, so when I was working on Spider-Man, I was like, right, I'm gonna make a poster, I'm gonna make a Facebook page, I'm gonna start marketing it, saying, hey, I'm gonna make this film. The first bit of attraction or we ever got on, on Spider-Man Lost Cause was on Facebook. I made a group, a Spider-Man Lost Cause group on Facebook, and I said to myself, I'm gonna add Andrew and all the crew and cast in here, and we're just gonna talk about shoot dates. I forgot to put on private, and it was public and loads of people started liking the page thinking it was a new Spider-Man film. And it was crazy because that for me was the first time the power of marketing really hit me. It seems like everyone just does it now um, as like a normal day-to-day -day thing on their Instagram. As young old school YouTubers, no one did it. And it was so new for us and it was weird because we learned that ourselves and you know, it grew, we, we grew it ourselves and it was something we never taught ourselves and it's something that everyone now does to this day and it's just insanely natural. It's something crazy to think about, but marketing is one of the greatest things. Make posters for your film, make trailers, make uh, talk about the behind the scenes, talk about the cast, talk about the crew, talk about your inspirations, talk about the motivation, talk about the story. Marketing is super exciting because if there's no marketing, no one's gonna see it, no one's gonna watch it. Screaming about yourself, your venture, your passion project is the most important thing because if you don't, people aren't gonna see it. People aren't even gonna know about it. You need to scream as loud as you can, say, hey, watch my film. So that was the end of part one. I hope you got a little more of an insight to making a fan film on a budget. Next episode will be the production, so the shooting and the pre-production, all the editing afterwards. And of course, if there is anything you want me to elaborate that I've said in this episode, please hit me up in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them. And please don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe if you find this content interesting. And I'll see you next episode. <laughs>